Ladies and gents, welcome to a best of five in the round of 16 of Sudden Disaster. Uh, it's a Sudden Death tourney. I've uh, been covering quite a few games of it recently, and it is a lot of fun. Sudden Death, of course, all based around destroying your opponent's town center. So if your town center is destroyed here, you are defeated. Uh, we have Barls in the red playing as the Koreans. In the blue, we have Valis playing as the Armenians. And uh, these two players know each other very, very well. Uh, they're very similar style players, I would say. And so this should be a pretty competitive series here. Now, again, you can't build more town centers, right? You're stuck with just this one. Uh, so if you're hoping to expand your eco, you would ideally find another building to produce economic units out of. And if it's not TCs, it's going to be docks. And there is 30,000 food amongst those rocks. I don't know how... The fish are not getting stuck in there. Sure, they're a little slippery, but I mean, 30,000? Yeah, that's a lot of food. So basically, endless amounts of food. I've never seen a game where the food runs out there in the middle. So um, very frequently what happens here is both players will end up coming out to dock. Both players will add you know, some fish, right? And usually it's not a lot because they're going to rush to Feudal Age to try and uh, kill the opponent's fishing ships. And then from there, there's a lot of adapting, uh, and that adapting can lead to... Uh, we see a lot of castles near the water to control this area, and then a lot of fast Imperial Age. So easier said than done, right? As is everything in this game, but... Uh, at Koreans, I mean, I'm thinking we might see guard towers from Barls. Maybe war wagons, maybe some ev even some turtles here. Yo, Saseki, thank you for the for the gifted subs, my friend. Saseki with the 40 months as well. Nice to see you, Saseki. Good day. Also, Saseki resubbed with the message 11 and then gifted 11. That's funny. That's 11. Johnson, welcome. Thank you for the new sub. He says, I'm not going to get a gifted sub. All right. I'm on top of this. So yeah, towers to control the map. Uh, there are stones and golds elsewhere. Which obviously could be taken. You can't TC them though. So I would imagine the stones and golds inside the their walls is going to be enough. And now both players have gone for the dock. Now if I had to choose which civilization I prefer. I prefer the Armenians because of their economy. Uh, the rate at which they bring in wood and golds after their mule cart upgrades is insanely strong. I also think building the fortified church with the Armenians and getting the instant relic is great. There's also a relic right here. So, like, you could conceivably have, like, two or three relics on the back of a really good wooden food eco. So, the Korean player just won't have the economy to compete. Beyond the stone mining, the Koreans do win with that. And then maybe, again, a side... Maybe a push with guard towers could happen here. Hmm. Uh, Paul, I can add the logo in between games onto this scene. I don't know if I have to have the logo in-game. If I do, I'll I'll handle that in between games. I have it out of game, so. So, fishing away. Now, again, these players are very similar, so I wonder if maybe they predict what the other's going to do. It almost feels like they're considering... I mean, this is, this is heavy fishing ship numbers here. Four fishing ships here for Valis. But just as I was thinking, maybe he was just going to chill. He's definitely going to click up to Feudal Age here. And he's going to drop off the food. And voila. There he goes. On the way to Feudal. Barls will beat him by uh, 25 seconds. Barls, is he going to stone or is this wood? Or is this gold? Okay, it's gold. Nice. So both players just staring at each other here. It's so funny, if they were to just, like, agree not to attack each other here, which obviously they'd never do, that's stupid thought, but if they were, it would change the game entirely. They would both go Fast Castle, because it's, like, easy breezy food eco, and then you're behind walls. But neither player wants to give the other player an edge here. You know, where the Koreans could really struggle is Koreans can't make demos. What What is Barl's gonna try and do if he can't make demos here I, that really hurts you Barls is leaving his base with a couple villagers now I think this is for a, a a tower over here I think that's the plan I think he wants to tower this 
Maybe tower with some fire galleys is the play. Valis sees this. He can't wall in his dock and ooh. I mean, this wall doesn't really deny Valis from finishing the dock. But it, oh, it does block off his tower. Ah. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is interesting. So again, most of the other games I've seen, it's just been Navy, right? But now Valis' is dock, dock is denied at 69%. And don't say nice, because that's not nice. That's pretty brutal. He's going to lose out some of that wood. And for now, both players producing a fire galley. And then the tower is going to be up. So Valis can't fish here because of that tower. And of course, the towers get stronger if this game goes to castle. And look at Barls. He's blocking the way. His fishing ships... They should play offensive linemen for the Vikings here. This is great blocking. Fishing ship's just gonna sit there and he tries to run away and the fishing ships say, nope, no you don't. I command this passage. Man, that's amazing for Barls. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, and then we have a tower here from Valus as well. So his tower can't really be denied by anything. So it feels like both players are gonna lose fish. It is nice that Barls is able to, uh, you know, get some food. From this it's kind of nice that he can escape with the fish as well it feels like he sees what's going on and he's going to go this way there is a shore fish there but again he can't make demos so that's a problem okay guys pay attention to the resources collected the armenians are insane with the the bonus where their mule cart upgrades are like 40 percent more efficient it's ridiculous you could already move the mule cart around to add to efficiency but then you're collecting wood and gold faster than your opponent can can conceivably do themselves. So it's like it's it's just a wild bonus. Um and it's it's part of what makes him so strong. And so no you know, nothing really positive has happened for Valis on the offensive front, and yet he's still got higher res collected just because of being Armenians. It's funny how they're both taking the two hundred shorefish and keeping their fishing ships alive. Like, if Barls ever shows a group of ships here, demos are going to pop out, and it's going to be a problem. Here comes the tower rush now from Barls. So, th this is interesting, right? Because Valis just placed his tower. He didn't go to stone to make more. And he's, he's just going right through here. This is smart, because his opponent can't have a demo. Now, here he's going to delete some of his walls and rush down this tower. We have the box emote, guys. I added the, the mod back. Uh, that tower is going to go down. Like This is a big mistake. To build your tower up against the opponent's walls, against good players, they're just going to do this. And what you can do is you can try and hop out the other side, which is what he's trying to do, and the game won't let him. And then you can fight this off and then play this whole repair, attack, repair, attack, re repair. Look at them inside the tower. And, well... This is really good reaction from Barls, and now Valis has deleted some of his walls, and Barls could potentially run in, and the tower stays up. Barls is going to lose water. He actually could lose the tower to the fire ships. I think it'd definitely be worth it for Valis to go for that tower, because that way he could take his fish, he could uh, take resources again. Remember, I was, you know, saying all these good things about the resources collected for Armenians. Well, it remains the case that there's more resources collected, but look at the resource balance from Barls. Dang. Does he have a blacksmith? He must have a blacksmith somewhere. I would assume he wouldn't forget this. I think maybe he has forgotten it. Yep, there's the blacksmith. Okay. Guys, I have to sneeze. Come on, you stupid sneeze. I'm looking at the light. Okay, it disappeared. It'll come back another day. This is a great play from Valis, though. I love this. Takes down the tower. Maybe could add, actually just bring these fishing ships back. He has gone to stone to make more defensive towers. He's not up yet, though. And this is sudden death, guys. If Barls can get another tower down, let's say here, he can have a nice position to siege push or even castle drop this TC. Over here, we've got outposting from Valis, so he wants an idea of what Barls is doing. Barls will be able to see those outposts. But not really anything you want to do about that right now if you're Barls. Maybe you could send the scout over. Valis has his scout, though, waiting inside of his base on full HP. 
That's a lot of navy. And if you have water control, in theory, you can transport and go in to take the opponent's TC in some way. But it's like, what are you going to transport? Here comes the tower. Now, can this be ranged by fire? It can't. So, smart move from Barls. And Valis still isn't clicked up, and he forgot his blacksmith. Big difference in the castle age up times here. This is a big opportunity here for Barls. Have you guys ever heard that, by the way? That if you stare at the like a bright light, it helps your sneeze happen? Have you guys ever heard that? I don't know if it's scientifically proven, but growing up, it was like if you were on the brink of sneezing, they'd say, look at the light. Okay, so the funny thing is, right? So I don't know if that's true or not. But I, like growing up, it was always, you look at the light, it helps you sneeze. And my fiance, the way she was either taught or what she just assumed was that if you look at the light, it helps you not sneeze. <laughs> so I don't know if it's different for different people, it definitely helps me, but I <laughs> I always thought it was funny I was so different. Are you sick? I'm sick of your crap, Roman. That's what I'm sick of. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Sorry. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry. I, did I say that out loud? I didn't, I didn't know I said that out loud. That's my bad. I'm just chill. We're going to have some siege coming out here from Barls. These villagers need to run away. Okay. I think Thallus thinks he's going to die and this is what he's going to do he's going to go fortified church in front of his tc to protect it and he's going to yolo castle drop barrels because he can run right into the eco from barrels because he's taking out the walls this is going to be nuts obviously good timing here from barrels get some kills the stone wall buys valis a little bit of time this is sudden death i really like the thought uh, assuming valis is thinking what i'm thinking you send the Vils, you go crazy with it. And Barls can't go anywhere near the shoreline. He sees the stone walls. He doesn't see the TC. Maybe you should try and go this way. But again, I'm thinking fortified church because it can shoot some arrows. It like helps you defend a little bit. Oh, Barls! Barls, I think senses something. Oh, and he's dropping a castle there, and he's building. Uh, foundations to try and block the castle from Valis. So actually, that's a big deal for Barros. This is still going to be rough. But if this castle would have been here, it's game over for Barros. The fact that the castle might not range the TC gives him a shot. He's going to drop a tower. So both players castle dropping the other. Barros will definitely not range the TC from Valis. I think Valis has a chance at ranging the TC from Barros with Bod Canero. Hmm. It really just comes down to if this TC r is ranged by the castle. Oh, it is! It is! Oh, no! That's so bad for Barls. Oh, man. That's so bad. Okay. Um. So, Barls is going for Petard. Right? He's got Siege. He's going to have Ram, Mangadel, Petard. He could do it. He's going to have to repair from the far side of the TC, which takes up a lot of your wood. Now, Valis could maybe go for Petards, but I think you just got to keep your Vils in there and hope to shoot that thing down. That's your best way of doing this. Okay, the demo popped out there to try and take down the Ram. There, there's like no eco here for Valis at the moment. So Valis actually doesn't have anything on wood, guys. Ooh, but this Mangonel is huge. Okay, the Mangonel helps defend. Can Barls do this? He's gonna. You need five Petards to hit the TC to take it out. Right now, it might only be four because some HP is lost. This is insane. This is so good. And it's that Manganel for Valis that is the key to his defense. I'm pretty sure... I mean, Barls can't afford to go for Bodkin Arrow. Oh, Barls, you've got to repair this more, dude. You've got to repair this. You also have to micro perfectly here. I like the walls from Valis. Valis is, is just doing whatever he can to slow this down. Maybe even bringing some villagers home here. Barls has to micro perfectly. He also could die. He's added more repair villagers there. There's only two petards. That's not going to be enough. Well, maybe. I mean, it's close to being enough because HP has been taken off of this TC. 
in before one of these guys runs out of wood for a repair here. Happening for Barls. I'd like to see Valus maybe make a petard himself, but he would run into walls, which is why he's not doing it. <laughs> this is amazing! I love this! And, it, you know, maybe it gives Barls... I don't really know how he's getting food, but maybe it gives him time to, to get more petards. Oh! Oh, that's huge! That's huge! Okay! Okay, Barls has an opportunity now. There's another Manganel at 80%. Valus has big wood problems. Ram's gonna come in. He might... Barls might just go for it here. He is just gonna go for it. He's repairing his ram. Every every second, every repair matters so much. Every hit. Petards? Two petards? Can they get through? Ah! It's so close! It's so close! Repairing the ram! Does it make the difference? Ah! No! And Barros is almost dead on the other side. He's out of wood, Valis. He is out of wood. Barros still has wood. He needs to repair. 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 What is happening? No way. Attack with the Vils. Repair. <laughs> Guys, they're both down below 200 HP, but Valis is going to be defeated. Oh my goodness. What a game. What a game. Oh, man. Barrels almost died. Valis w was almost dead for so long there. And uh, Barrels gets the victory. That was one of the closest sudden death finishes I've ever seen. And both players made the right plays. That's, that's the amazing thing about this. I, I can't really question the players too heavily. I think Valis, maybe he didn't execute as well. Like the Manganel War, obviously, uh, maybe needed an extra stone tile. But my goodness, was that close. Um, I want to go back. I want to see how close was Barrels going down. Because he he went down below 100 HP here. I think we see it's kind of hard to, to get it, guys. But I think it's like 82 HP at one point. And actually, we got 68 HP at this point. So, I mean, things go a little bit differently. 45, I saw... Things go a little bit differently. Maybe Barrels does go down. It, it was so tough for both of them to focus on both sides. I love the recognition from Barrels that he couldn't wait much longer. And that once he took out that one Manganel from Valis, he just had to go. He brought the Batards in. He brought the Vils as well. And the Vils uh, with the big assist here on the Manganel in the end. And the funny thing for Valis is he's repairing with his Wood Villagers. Whereas for Barrels, he had Wood Villagers and he also had Repair Villagers. And that's just because of, you know, his 40 villagers. He doesn't have 20 of them sitting inside of a castle. Um, anyways, an amazing game. Uh, photo finish here in Sudden Death. Both players found ways to castle drop each other, and the water elements were cool. Um, I hope people on YouTube enjoy this. This is like an instant classic, and these guys are going to play more games. So, YouTube, you know the drill by now, but in case you don't, the full series will be on my extras channel, so that'll be in the description. Um, unless, of course, every single game is a banger like that one, uh, and then they'll all be individual uploads. But yeah, just, just check the description if you want to watch the full series and if you're hungry for more content. But uh, just quick look through on the resources here. Uh, 23 to 13 there for Barrels with the KD. There's the resources he had collected. More wood um, and more gold, I guess. And somehow ended up collecting more resources in that game. It's pretty wild. And I, I said how the Armenians are going to collect more wood. And then Barrels ended up prioritizing that more. Unbelievable game. I love how their APM is so chill here. And then I don't know whatever happened here. <laughs> but they were both going crazy there in early feudal. So these guys wasted no time uh, starting the next one. This is another sudden death game here in sudden disaster. I think I did say... I was going to do something between games. I forget. It is also Regicide. So the kings that are speedily running around right now, if they die, uh, the players are defeated. So I saw MBL was in my chat. MBL, look away, my friend. Uh, sorry, too soon? Maybe it is. Um, two of the TCs are outside of the walls, right? So these TCs are very exposed. Uh, that is by design. I would say that sometimes this can be quite unlucky. So, like, Barls, for example, one castle can take out two TCs. That hurts for him. I think Valis would prefer his position with his uh, TCs more, more 
to spread out here. But we'll see what happens. Italians, it's cheaper age ups, cheaper techs uh, out of the university. And this map has been a fast imp battle more often than not. So I would expect the Italians fit very nicely here. And then same deal with the Bengalis. The Bengalis get plus two villagers from each TC when they make it to the next stage. So that means you go to Feudal Age, you get plus six. You go to Castle Age, you get an additional plus six. You go to Imp, you get an additional plus six. And what does that come out to? Uh, 18. Yeah. <clears throat> Did the math there real quickly. Real easy, breezy math for me. So that's just basically an instant eco lead for the Bengali player. Uh, because they have castles, they could potentially make their unique units. So we could see the Genoese crossbow. We could see the, uh, the Ratha. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, prediction. If Ratha are created, they will get stuck here. This is just a disastrous castle spot. If you set the rally point this way, to the left, a unit will get stuck there. If you set the rally point this way, a unit will get stuck there. It is almost a guarantee that Ratha or Trebs. <gasps> oh my god. He could get a Trebs stuck in there. And you can't put Trebs back in the castle like you can with other units. Ooh. That could be rough. I mean, I would say that he should recognize this. But it's difficult to notice such details because it's such a rare thing. So... Um, couple shoutouts. Yo, Yip Yip, thank you for the eight months. Skull Candy, thank you for 20. Thank you, Colonia, for three years. It says, uh, damn, time sure does fly. Here's so many more. Thank you for the entertainment. You give us all T90 love. T90 love is, is well to you, Colonia. Thank you. Three years. So that's That takes us back like five, right? Because of the two years on Facebook, so. Oof. Uh, Panda, thank you for the new sub. Thank you, Zenton. Thank you, SLP. Uh, Nelagia, thank you. Paladin, welcome. Appella, you're welcome. Big Ville lead now for Valis. And Valis also bringing quite a few villagers over here to mine the stone outside. That's interesting. So this, this to me is so many on stone. This is going to be a multi-castle drop situation. I think knowing the one TC is here will mean a castle drop comes up here for Valis. Barls is expecting it. So he's, uh, he's going to build an outpost. And then Valis is kind of walled up a little bit. Also built buildings in front of these TCs to get an idea. But he doesn't know... Like, Valis doesn't know the other TC is here for Barls. So. Hmm. Kings, of course, need to be protected. Both players have their kings inside of their base. And those kings should be completely fine. I think if someone gets into your base, you have bigger problems with the whole sudden death scenario. So... But I, I'm I'm foreseeing Valis going forward and dropping a castle here, right? Because the idea is the castle will just take care of one TC for you. And if you can also fast Imperial Age, it'd be impressive. But yeah, clearly these guys, this is the area where action is going to happen. I would feel very uncomfortable being the Italian player because if you have to Vil fight to stop this, you are Vil fighting against a player who's got more Vils to work with, right? So it's like... It's worse for your economy to engage in such shenanigans, but you may feel like you have to engage in such shenanigans. Oh, yeah. Valis is definitely... It's going to be a castle off here. The only... The only good thing is that Barls is going to be in Castle Age slightly faster. So he can drop his right away. That's really good. And now I think Valis might need to reconsider. Hmm. Wow, we've got... This is... I want to make a really bad joke. <laughs> Do I have permission, chat? <laughs> have the minus 7Ks ready. Is David Castle off here. Didn't know he'd be featured in this in this movie. Castle off here, and uh, we're going to have a siege off. Don't think I can make any other <laughs> bad jokes with that. And we're going to have petards from Valis and from Barls. So it's Rams for Barls with petards. And Armored Elephants for Valis. All right, I'm going to let you in on a little detail, okay? I hate Armored Elephants. I hate it. I'm going to tell you why. Because in the moments where you really need them, you, you're set up to spend wood and gold, 
like rams, right? That It just feels more natural to go wooden gold and save your food. You gotta spend food on this bad boy. And that can be really awkward in these scenarios, but they aren't still your ram option. Oh. Oh, and Valis wants to drop another castle here. Does Barl see any of this? Ooh. Barl's is going to outpost. He sees the siege workshop. Who knows if he's paying attention because of what's happening over here, though. Castle foundation's there. Barl's needs to react with his own castle right away. Right away. Right away. But he also needs to... Oh, he's building one here. Well, the armored elephants have worked pretty well. They take out the rams... And Barl's notices this in nice position here from Valis. The Tards come out very quickly here from Valis. It hasn't taken out the castle yet, though. Manganel behind will take out the Armored Elephant. That's good. The other Armored Elephant is coming back. Villagers are getting shot down. Barl's knows that he needs to have eight Petards for a full HP castle. He might have enough for this one! He needs one more Petard. No, he, he, I think he needs more than that, actually. Another armored elephant coming in on this side. Desperation time for Barls. The petard hopped out on the side. What are you doing, you petard? Back into the castle? Nope, didn't happen. Barls is struggling. Barls is struggling. We have petard passing. Just, just petarding, just passing, and Barls is going to lose this castle. But he does have the other one, and he still has the ram, and he has also that villager who's very bold. Both of them have a bold villager. Um, and yeah, need I remind you they need to manage their economies and everything else. This is getting very messy, but so much for fast imp, right? That has not happened. It's going to be very difficult for either player to petard in this situation now because the castles are far apart from each other. And we've got uh, Manganel's and Genoese crossbow as the plan for Barl's. He actually stalled out Vill production here. He wants to click up to Imp, though. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense because it's cheaper for you. But also, what's the best way to take out the enemy castles now? Treps. Wow, really well executed from Barl's here. He's so good. It's so easy to just be uh, creating Vills because it feels so natural. Like, not only did he stop at the perfect time, but he didn't stop too early. He still has a healthy vill count, but it feels like the situation's nice. Now, Now the problem is he's using the repair hotkey to repair his TC. If you use the repair hotkey to repair a TC, your villagers stand in the middle of it. If you just right-click the TC, I know this sounds stupid, but if you just right-click the TC, you repair on the outside. So if you have a castle firing on your TC, you don't want to do what he did. Now, this villager's just out of range somehow, but a couple did go down. A lot of people saying they love me in chat today. I love you guys too. Thank you. I don't know. Is this like some type of inside joke? I can't seem that. that that's just weird. Petards. Not being made from this castle, but from this castle. So it's going to be siege elephants and also petards. The king is standing next to the tree there. Um, Just saying if the Ratha get in. Genoese crossbow should be pretty good against Ratha. TCs need to stay up in this game mode, remember. We have a double whammy here. Valis trying to go for both TCs. The Petards. They will be focused down by, by uh, Barls, but Barls doesn't have an answer to the Siege Elephants. Siege Elephants are doing work. Over here, Siege Elephants doing work. TC goes down. TC's going to go down. Barls is going to have one town center, but... This ain't over yet, because he will be in the Imperial Age. So, just one TC and he can never make a new one, but... He could potentially treb back all of Valis's castles, and then kill Valis pretty quickly after that. Valis needs to get up here. And he needs to be prepared to sink a lot of that stone into repairs, just to keep him... keep his position. I would really like to see skirmishers as a plan for him. He likes his monks. He's going to add some monks. But Barl's... Oh, man. He can't make the treb yet because he's housed. That'll change. He'll have pop space again in a second because of that castle. Manganel's behind this castle in case the siege elephants come in, which is smart. Treb's on the way. Treb's already out. Oh, God. Okay, where's the king now? Is the king... The king is still there. 
Amazing foresight from Barls to know that he needed to build this castle, though. And even the house wall here. Like, this this guy's so good. The Manganel's here to defend from this. He knows that there was going to be a crazy play from Valis. So he just positioned himself nicely to defend from it. I think the Genoese crossbowmen with imp upgrades should be able to take this out. It takes time, but they still should be able to. They don't have bonus damage against the armored elephants, which makes sense to me because armored elephants siege would be technically Genoese crossbowmen have a bonus against these types of like normal elephants, but I actually quite like the fact that they don't have any bonus damage against it there. Um Castle's gonna go down. Now, Valus is about to get Omega housed because he's gonna lose two castles, but he's also gonna get an additional six villagers. <laughs> so he's pop capped now. He might panic and start making houses somewhere. Okay, he's dropping a castle. Still pop capped, still can't produce. This is his last TC. There go the elephants. Hey, can you imagine? It's not gonna happen, but it's pretty crazy. Um, this castle here will also go down, but he's just replacing his castles. He's replacing his castles, and he's adding archer ranges. I assume to go skirms. But Barrels has pulled ahead in this game. A crazy series so far. The batards didn't work out. The monk edition feels a little awkward now. And Ballas just got finished with being popcapped, and is now popcapped again because of the castle situation. And now he loses this TC, so he's going to be down to two. Hmm. Good micro here from Barls with the Genoese. We have coinage! A misclick from Valis. Coinage! What is it? Lowy the Legend Day? They see coin, they click coin, wanting some gold. He's got plenty of gold. Coinage would not help him here. Hmm. This castle is going to be the next target for Barls. He's just going to continue this snowball of trebs and cannons. Now, what Barrels doesn't have is a great eco to tech switch. So, he, this is just textbook castle creeping. You build the castle, you have your siege prepared, you just go for their next castle. And you basically just, by the time they get an army somewhere to deal with you, you ideally have a castle in that very same position. Because right now, Valis can't deal with the castles. Another TC is behind this, of course, so it looks like Valis is going to be down to one TC pretty soon. And Valis does have skirms that could kill the Genoese, but the castle's up, right? And that's the problem. He didn't know the castle was going up as well, apparently. Sick. I see some armor upgrades coming in for Barls. So he saw skirms. He might be thinking of dropping barracks for condos. I really like his position right now. What do you do if you're Valis? Bengalis could maybe go for monks to convert the cannons. Skirm Elephant I don't hate, but he's just, he's really struggled. He just had built up so much on the front, and having lost all that, it's become so awkward for him now. Hmm. TC is going to go down. Villagers out here are exposed. Over here, Barls has been patient, hasn't taken any unnecessary losses. And the goal for him is maybe to take the TC. You know what would be so funny? The king might die to a treb shot. You know how I said that if a villager is repairing underneath the TC, sometimes the treb shot can hit it? That same thing could happen with the king. <laughs> There's a chance, guys. <laughs> There's a chance. Gate's gonna go down. And then he's gonna run through. He might just he might think that Valis can hold long term if, if the skirms work out. So he might just push it. There's no answer to the trebs. He might just go directly for the TC. And we could see the king go down then. Now there are gonna be condos, and the condos have great upgrades. Yeah, the condos can actually take care of the skirms. That is why Barls is doing this. This would be the time. If you're Valis to go for some type of epic play. Ah, uh, he moved the king. Disappointing. But I think Valis is in trouble. He doesn't have the army here to deal with these trebs. Barls has immediately gone for the TC, recognizing the game mode. Oh! Oh! Interesting. Oh! Oh! Uh, repair! 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 He's dead. Wow.
I mean, a great game from Barls. A really good game from both of them here. Uh, the treb shenanigans, the petards, the castle drops. It was crazy. It was messy. But somehow throughout all that mess, Barls is just able to calm his mind and play towards the imp timing there. It was such a good game from him. And honestly, like, if he wasn't quite as quick to deploying these trebs onto the TC, this play from Valis might have actually given him a chance. Valis over here was going to kill these cannons. Looks like he was going to lose his own trebs, but he might have taken out this castle. The mangonel was enough to take out the trebs with like two or three more volleys. So, yeah, I, overall, I think Valis maybe could have stabilized a little bit. Maybe staying in his base with his skirms and not leaving would have been the play. I don't think he expected the condos there. But it's just like, Valis took out two early TCs. Barl said, I don't care because imp matters the most. The imp upgrades on his units having access to condos and imp and also the trebs and Barls goes up 2-0 in this series which of course is great like great games but i want to see five games between these two so now i'm a little bit a little bit worried Barls is playing too good here dang such fun action that 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 map by the way is not always that fun many times it's just fast imp no army and trebs and bomber cannons so the fact that we saw that much army is pretty wild and i'm a fan also, look what time the game ended. 30 minutes. 30 minutes, zero seconds. Good stuff. Ooh, historical matchup. All right. Uh, well, this is an easy win for the Spanish. Do we even have to cast this? This is a 3-0. Game over. It was a fun, fun while it lasted, but Spanish, all they have to do is pretty much show up and breathe, and the Aztecs are going to be completely decimated here. Um, Valis is playing as the Aztecs. We have Spanish... For Barls, there is no uh, flu involved here in Age of Empires 2. Please don't. We should actually move on from this quickly. I don't want to give the devs any ideas. Seriously, I mean, I'm just waiting for the flu DLC. Um, it's definitely a bit closer than history would suggest. Um, Aztecs, if they get the relics especially, are insanely strong. But anytime you're up against the Spanish, you could potentially have some issues against the conquistador i think there is also potential we see a monk war here like i think the best thing the aztecs can do in the early game on arena is make monks the best thing they could potentially do to counter the potential conquistadors is to make monks valis likes his monks i wonder if barrels will make monks and research inquisition because nobody expects the spanish inquisition but of course, you need a castle for that. It costs resources. And then, you know, it might make sense to just go for like light cab or something to kill the enemy monks first. Um, but yeah, those those are the that's the basic breakdown of the options here. Remember, it's one TC. This is sudden death. You cannot add more eco. So you would expect a lot of investment into the, uh, the map control here. Relics maybe slightly favor Valis here. Yeah, they definitely do favor Valis. A couple of them being closer, but it's not like egregious. So, guys, back in like 2014, 2015, it was common for, you know, one out of every 10 times for a relic to spawn inside someone's base. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I... I personally wouldn't mind a little bit more variance to some scripts these days, like a few more hills for Arabia. You know, uh, I might be looking at the past through rose-tinted glasses, but uh, I think relics spawning inside someone's base is probably a little too extreme, but that's just kind of how it worked back then. It was just like, okay, this guy got a relic inside of his base and all four of them right outside his walls. Let's see what the other guy's going to do about it. <laughs> it was a good time. Uh, yo, AJ, thank you for the five months. Nova guy, uh, you're welcome for all the content. All right, so spoilers for you guys. Those of you who like the content. So, you know, uh, Phosphoru, right? I, uh, I played, I was playing the ladder the other night. I was like, okay, one more game. I played too long. One more win, right? It was one of those classic things. And I get Phosphoru. And I've been doing research on Phosphoru because he has a new strategy that he's using. It's not with the Bohemians. It's not with the Sicilians. It's not with the 
What did he do before? The Malians. It's not with the Turks. So I was like... I was already doing research, but I, di I didn't have games I could cast because the, the recorded games broke. So I had some insights on what he was going to try. And the game was nuts, okay? So if you see that game on YouTube this week, it's genuinely one of the craziest games I've played. All I'll say is uh, there was lots of death and destruction and... If you like making fun of me, if that's like, you know, a little side benefit of you watching my content or laughing at me, you will have some of those moments too. Hmm. So Valis is obviously, I mean, they're both, well, I was going to say they're both going fast castle. We have Barls leaving his base, so. Barls is leaving his base. This might be towers and archers here from Barls. I like the classic move there. In order to delete the evidence... You can build a unit found a uh, building foundation over top of an animal carcass, which is what he just did, just so Valis doesn't catch a glimpse of that. No loom yet, by the way. And the wolves really want that one villager, so she's now very weak. That could potentially be a problem. I imagine loom is in queue, but it doesn't look like it. He goes for an archer range. And if you see that feudal age time in your Valis, you're immediately like, get me back inside my walls. Get me home, please. Get me home. Home, 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 home. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I mean, if that scout makes it in there, there are going to be a few problems for Valis. He didn't have loom, so a villager could have gone down. His opponent would also get to scout a strategy. Maybe the eagle would have died. Nice shot from him. That you should always do that. Just especially if you got an eagle. The eagle becomes stronger in castle age, but. All right, so the idea here is to hold map control, right? There is gold on the back for Valis, but he didn't build his mining camp there, and he's going to go market. He's going to go blacksmith. The Spanish, one of two civilizations that can't get crossbows, so these archers are not necessarily a long-term thing. I am wondering if Barls remembers he doesn't have loom. We have a pause now. Um, because uh, these games are live, but, um, feels like Valis is maybe gonna market blacksmith this tower here, and then just go up to Castle Age and maybe plan on Siege or something. So we'll see. Someone said, T90, does the yeah. user chat history you see go back to before you left Twitch? Yeah, it goes back years and years and years and years. We've got tons of information on you. <laughs> um, sorry. But yeah, um, the chat history, like I could look at any user's chat and it goes back to any time they've left a message on this channel and this channel's existence. So it's funny to me when like someone like puts in like a unban request or something. We, we don't have that too many people banned. But it's like, I literally, I've never been a problem. It was just only one time. And then you go back and it's just like whoosh, like years of problematic behavior. <laughs> But in general, everything's pretty chill. But I like to do that because it like it adds perspective, right? It adds perspective to you know people and um, like if someone says you know even something nice and normal, I like to look and be like, how long has this person been around? You know what? Can I trust this individual? Have they had good takes? Right? It's not that deep, but okay. So nice walling there from Valis. He goes over to the gold now, and he'll be in Castle H soon. Barls? Still no loom. And I'm beginning to wonder if there's a risk that he could lose these vills. Like, three eagles being out there, these villagers would be in jeopardy. But he's got a uh, decent enough eco behind this. I mean, I'm actually not a big fan of the eco setup for Barls here. But he will have more resources collected because he... Well, I mean, he has the wood upgrade, but so does Valis. Valis has played this well. Has enough food income to produce a couple eagles and to produce some vills. Tower is going to be going up there from Barls. I don't think Barls would do this if this wasn't sudden death. Because if this wasn't sudden death, then Valis could just siege push this back and add town centers. But because you can't add town centers, it makes the strategy a bit stronger, I would say. Eagle now is stronger than the scout. Seven base attack and is moving out. So, thank you. Also, to the 
two people who are being problematic in my chat on the whole topic of like mods and whatnot. I, you don't understand it. These guys are like rabid dogs, right? Helpful rabid dogs, but they're just ready to bite, right? Ready to get rid of people. We have a lot of people who watch, right? You know, you make it problematic. Don't pull the trigger, you know? Put you in a little timeout. How would that feel? Not being able to express yourself, not being able to leave a message on a Twitch chat. Or like potentially hold 24 hours, maybe a week, maybe forever. <gasps> Horrible, right? It's just life changing stuff. So, you know, just like don't be weird. Don't don't be a jerk. You know who I'm talking to, person? Sorry, mods. It's probably a, you know, it was a joke. You're not all rabid. Ram here uh, is going to try and getting close to the towers. Uh, remember, these villagers are non-loomed, okay? They are they are unloomed. They, they have not received the loomage. And death could be looming for them. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? Ram has not been able to get to a tower yet. But, I mean, if I'm in... If I'm in Barl's position, I'm I'm super dead here. I don't know how he's planning on getting his way out of this situation. The archers are going to go down. This is interesting because it, the way these buildings are positioned, it is rather awkward for Valus to get those vills. So the tower might complete. This villager is actually in the tower repairing, but now the tower doesn't exist anymore. So now he... Oh! <laughs> now he quick walls. Okay. I mean, respect, Barl's. Respect. And stable's probably going to go down. Archers are in the tower, though. I mean, there's a couple villagers that have still somehow stayed alive. He hasn't lost one yet. What is this? <laughs> He's bought himself a lot of time because Valis won't focus on getting relics or doing anything else. This is crazy. Barl's... He still has no loom. Okay, she dies finally. This villager's just coming over to repair the ram. The stable's gonna be down. That's a problem. And villagers maybe need to make a run for it. Valis says, you cannot make a run for it. You've entered my base and you shall stay here. Oh! Okay, villager's dead. There was a bit of a delay on his death there. Hmm. All right. Cold, can someone time out Cold Master? Cold Play Master, you're really bothering me. All right. You, I gave you the weird warning, the weird vague warning, and now I'm being direct. You just, you're just being a little too crazy. All right. So TC's not really in jeopardy for either player just yet. Archer range will be rammed down. I don't think that's something you necessarily need here with the Spanish. Villagers on stone now for Barls. Res collected. Barls is ahead. He lost three villagers, which isn't great. And he doesn't have an easy way to contest for the relics right now, which is the bigger problem because we already have relic number one, about to be relic number two. Maybe three or four relics will be in the monasteries for Valis, which is huge with the Aztecs. Um, <laughs> someone says should have been banned for just liking Coldplay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So monks with Aztecs get extra HP once you get monk upgrades. We haven't seen them yet. But those upgrades are going to come in. Sanctity would give you plus 15 HP because of what Sanctity gives you, but then also 5 HP just for getting an upgrade. So it's like really strong. And Valis saw that there was a castle going up. That's critical here. So he knows that there's a castle. He knows Conks will be out. He also sees the scouts. What he doesn't know is there's going to be more scouts. In his mind, that could just be the starting scout. And that's a beautiful snipe there from Barls right before Sanctity comes in. But Aztecs, 33% more gold per relic. Two relics already in here. Third might be able to sneak in as well for Valis. This is a really good position for him. But, like Cav Conquistador is a really tricky comp. So I think... Ooh, ooh like Cav Upgrade's about to come in! Aztec Monk? Oh, that's Aztecs for you. That Monk needs to make a run for it. Valis might sacrifice this army. He might just fight this off and even block. Yeah, just, just to make sure this monk gets home. Wow, what was that shot from the Conquistador? What? The the first shot, he shot like two tiles in front of him, and then that one was max range, and he hit spot on. 
Uh oh. Run away. Monk is gonna die, most likely. What? What? Okay, the, the lack of accuracy. What? What's happening? <laughs> what? <laughs> very random accuracy here for the conquistadors. I mean, very realistic, possibly, with the weaponry they had back then, but um, it's going to be three relics for Valis. And he's going to go spears for any light cav, and then he's going to go monks for the conks. But I mean, the conks, as you can see, can kill everything. I would say maybe it's worth considering another monk upgrade just to get more HP here, but I don't know if that 5 HP does too much. Well, Valis taking some risks now. The other one's made sense. This one here's a surprise. Conversion happens, though. That's nice. And actually, the converted conquistador kills his friend. Or who used to be his friend. We don't really know. Pikeman upgrades in for Valis. Monks and Pikes. And Res Collected is going to start creeping ahead for Valis because, again, they're both on one TC. I wonder if we see missionaries now from uh, from Barls. Missionaries with Inquisition. He's going to get Devotion now, so units will resist conversion, but he can't be anywhere close to this. This is too risky. Four relics soon for Valis, then. Hmm. Uh, my back, thank you for the nine months. Thank you, Basserman. What's up, Grey Knowledge? Thank you. Captain Tinsley, what up? Is that is that what you refer to me as? Florida man? That's funny. I'll take it, I guess. Could mean very different things depending on the context. Uh, conversion on a light cap happens. That's not really the unit we want to convert, though. You want to have these conversions for the conks, and the conks shred. Oh, man. That, that's just brutal. And also, one of those monks didn't bring the relic home. And conquistadors. Doing conquistador things. Valis has to build up that monk number again. That was very relatable situation there for Valis. In theory, the monks can convert everything. But once devotion is in and once you have a lot, it's really hard to control. Very random spot for a blacksmith here from Barls. I think he wanted to go for a siege workshop here. And you need the blacksmith before that. Oh, wow. The house that Valis had built earlier is going down rapidly. This castle could, could potentially be denied. This is a problem. Castle's only at 30%. There is a siege workshop there. Mm. I guess maybe Barls will see the castle foundation and realize it's going to go up and he's not going to want to stay here. Oh! Okay, gets a couple kills. Backs away. Valis wants to go up to Imp now. But if you're in Imp and you have 12 range on the monks, then it becomes a different situation. So Barls has to know I, I can't kill him here. And actually with the score dip... I think he should know his opponent's in Imp as well. There was a pretty significant score dip. Score, score dip, score dip, sorry. And Valis, able to get the fourth relic, has brought in almost a thousand gold now. We have petards from Barls. Barls is going to go YOLO here, guys. Barls knows he needs to kill this TC. He's worried about Imperial Age. Wall should go down. The petard might just be for the wall, but by the time the petard gets there, the wall might even be down to the conks. Villagers are on the way. Valis actually sees that. I think he has some sense. Like, you should know because of the price of conquistadors being food and gold that you are going to be on the way to the Imperial Age and your opponent will not. Yeah, I think... Do you even save the petard here? Or how important is it for you to get through? Don't... That could be a waste. But he's through. He wants to castle drop here, guys. He wants to castle directly on Valis's TC. That's the plan here. But there's houses. So you have to drop it as quickly as possible. There he goes. Spanish builders. This castle should go up. We've got a siege tower. That's interesting. Oh, man. Vils are getting converted. Monk got converted. Monk's back away. Castle will go up for Barls. Barl's continuing to be aggressive. It's a sudden death. You just have to take out the TC. So he's thinking like, if I could use this castle as protection and run through with something, maybe there's a chance. I like the idea from Valis to build more fortifications behind this. In a normal game, you might not see these houses, but that is just to block off the TC. 
So a Treb's on the way for Valis from the castle. <laughs> I think Barls is going to siege Tower Vills around and find a castle spot. And then he's adding Petards as well. He wants to castle drop the TC and he wants to use Petards. This would be insane. <laughs> this is dangerous. Oh, he drops the castle there. Well, that is in range of the TC. And as long as he uh, takes out this house, he could fully surround this castle and repair it for a while. Oh, man. And then there's going to be Petards, and then there's going to be Conks. Oh, jeez. In theory, Barls doesn't need to kill any of this. He just needs to take out the TC. I'd love to see uh, Bod Canero as well. Oh, man. I think that Valus is in trouble. This is crazy well executed from Barls here. Both castles are making petards. The monastery is going to go down. So difficult for the monks to really be utilized now because of that castle. And Kongs destroy buildings pretty quickly as well. Most likely the rams are going to tank some of the shots too. The rams are going to go in towards the TC. Barls is waiting till he has enough petards. Now the pathing might be awkward because he's got so many units here. You want... Ideal world is you have a couple units in front of your petards so the petards don't get shot by the castle. He's opening up space. Can Barls do this? Does he rush with everybody? Meganels will hit the rams. There go Vils. There go the petards. There he goes. There he goes. And boom. Barls wins. What a game. Wow. That was so sick, man. He made that look so easy. In the castle age against him. The extra range monks didn't matter. The four relics didn't matter. The trebs didn't matter. And Barl's 3 0s uh, his opponent, who plays very well. Like I said at the start of this series, that these two would be very close. All the games, just incredibly impressive. And that's the whole objective, right? Like the objective of the tourney, it's a sudden death tourney, right? You have to go for the town centers. Barl's did that. I think a lot of people would have just tried to go imp as well if you're Barls, but then you don't have the relics, then you're up against Aztec monks, then you get pushed across the map, and he just turned it up a notch. Like, look how many vills he brought forward. Look at the amount of petards he created. Look at the amount of conks. Crazy, man. And it's tough for Valis. Like, I think the key for Valis is, is uh, you know, maybe some of the earlier fights where he lost the monks was a problem because he needed map control of some kind. But I can't be critical of Valis because I felt he did everything that he should have done with the faster imp. You go for the 12 range monks, you hope to get conversions on conks and treb down the castles. The problem was that takes time. And you also can't get near the castles until, well, you can't get near this area until the castles are down. And yeah, it took too much time and Barl's had too much commitment there. So uh, I think the scoreline definitely doesn't do the game's justice. I agree with that statement. I think Barl's... Well, he won 3-0. The games were a bit closer, but Barros just seems to have that extra edge. God, that was just so... That was just so good. <laughs> He's so freaking good. That was so cool, man. Such a fun concept for a tourney. And such great play there from Barros.